let us look at an example of how backtracking search works using a simple 9x9 Sudoku grid. Each cell of the grid is a variable and the domain of each variable is the set. Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to being passionate learner. In this video, we are going to dive into one of the most fundamental methods used for solving constant satisfaction problems which is backtracking search. Here is an overview of what we will cover in this video. We will start with a brief introduction to CSPs, define what backtracking search is, and then we will go through the steps involved in this method. We will also solve a Sudoku problem using backtracking search. We will look at possible optimizations in backtracking. We will discuss the limitations and we will wrap up with the conclusion. To begin, let's recap what a CSP is. In CSPs, we have a set of variables, each with the domain of possible values and a set of constraints. The goal is to assign a value to each variable in a such a way that all constraints are satisfied. If you want to know more about CSPs, then you can check out my video on CSPs. Its link is given in the description below. What is backtracking search? Backtracking search is a depth first search method. It systematically explores the possible values of each variable. If at any point the current assignment violates any constraints, the algorithm backtracks or undoes its most recent assignment and tries a new value for the variable. This process continues until either a solution is found or all possibilities are exhausted. These are the core steps of backtracking search algorithm. You start with no assignments and you select one variable at a time. You try different values for this variable and check if the constraints are satisfied. If they are, you move on the next variable. If not, you backtrack and try a different value for the previous variable. Repeat this process until the puzzle is completely solved or no solution exists. Let us look at an example of how backtracking search works using a simple 9x9 Sudoku grid. Each cell of the grid is a variable and the domain of each variable is the set 1 to 9 numbers. The constraints are each row must contain the numbers 1 to 9 without repetition. Each column must contain the numbers 1 to 9 without repetition. Each 3x3 three three subgrid must contain the numbers 1 to 9 without repetition. Now let's say backtracking algorithm for Sudoku. Here we walk through how backtracking search solves the Sudoku problem step by step. Choose an empty cell, assign a value from the domain 1 to 9 to the set. Check if the assignment is consistent with the Sudoku constraints. Does the number already exist in the same row? Does the number already exist in the same column? Does the number already exist in the same 3x3 three three subgrid? If consistent, move to the next empty cell and repeat the process. If not consistent, that is the assignment violates any of the constraints, then backtrack to the previous step, undo the assignment and try new value for the previous cell. Repeat this process until the puzzle is completely solved or no solution exists. Optimizations in backtracking. While backtracking search is a simple and effective approach, it can be optimized in several ways. Forward checking allows the algorithm to look ahead and rule out values that would lead to constraint violations later. Constraint propagation works by inferring additional constraints as more variables are assigned. Finally, choosing the most constrained variable first can significantly reduce the search space, which is called as variable ordering. Limitations of backtracking. Despite its utility, backtracking has some limitations. It can be very inefficient in large search spaces, particularly when there are many variables with large domains. It can also suffer from thrashing, where the search repeatedly backtracks at the same point. Moreover, backtracking doesn't guarantee the optimal solution. 
it just find any solution that satisfies the constraint. Conclusion Backtracking search is a simple but powerful technique for solving CSPs. It is highly effective for small to medium sized problems such as Sudoku or map coloring. With optimizations like forward checking and constraint propagation, its efficiency can be improved, but it does have limitations when dealing with the larger or more complex search spaces. Thank you for watching this video. See you in my next video. Till then, being passionate learner, keep learning. Thank you.